Okay, this is 10.1 from chapter 10. So chapter one, 10 is going to be about two different concepts, polar coordinates and then vectors. Um, and I believe I have to change the schedule that was in the syllabus a little bit because um, I wanna talk about the polar coordinates, which is sections one and two in one week on its own. And then we'll get into vectors the second and third weeks. Um, just because I don't want to go from polar coordinates and then in the same week go to vectors and then continue from there. So for this week, we're just going to just um, do 10.1, 10.2, and then the following week we'll do three, four, and five, which will all be vectors, okay? Um, so the, we're gonna start going through all of this. There, it says, um, unlike regular rectangular coordinates, which are coordinates that are in X, Y, um, polar coordinates are of the form R and theta, where R represents the radius and then theta represents the uh, angle, okay? And so because R represents the radius, um, what that means is that our graphing paper is no longer going to be a bunch of squares like it is in the rectangular system. It's actually going to be more like um, this image here. So you go out a particular radius and then you move according to your, um, or you rotate according to your um, angle, okay? So the graphing paper for the rectangular system is this with a bunch of squares, right, for the units for X and Y. However, when you talk about polar coordinates, the um, you still have like an X and Y axis. However, there's not squares anymore. There's circles in that graph paper. Okay, so it's a little bit different than what we've been doing before. It's a whole nother system. Now, the systems do overlie. So you can have like in this image, um, the polar coordinates, which is the circles and the axes. And then you can have the rectangular system, which is all the squares that are on top of it. Um, and so they do exist together. Um, it's just one representation versus another representation. So you have a rectangular representation, but you also have what's called a polar representation, okay? but essentially they're both on the X, Y axis, okay? So notice that here it says plot three and 60 degrees, okay? So you do it by first drawing the angle of 60 degrees and you can do it both ways. You don't have to do it in this order like they did. Um, you can do it the reverse. You can go to your radius first, meaning go out three units and then um, rotate according to the angle. So you do have options. And that's the one thing that distinguishes polar coordinates from rectangular coordinates. Because in the rectangular coordinate system, you have one way of plotting it and one way of expressing that point. In polar coordinates, you have multiple ways where you can plot it and multiple ways where you can represent that same point. Okay, so it's a little bit different. And why do we want that polar coordinate system? Because sometimes when you're working on problems in later calculus, um, when you take calculus and things like that, um, sometimes it's easier to manipulate problems to come up with a solution faster or nicer if you write it in a certain representation, okay? So eventually you will be asked to solve some problems in calculus where they pretty much seem impossible to solve in their rectangular system forms with X and Y. But then when you convert them into polar, they become a lot more solvable, okay? So there is a reason why we need to talk about chapter 10 and it is going to come up a lot when you get to calculus, especially the higher level calculus is like Cal 2 and Cal 3. Um, you're definitely going to want to know how and where the polar system is coming from. Okay. 
So with that said, let's go ahead and graph this. So when I say there's two ways to do it, okay. The first way to do it is to go up 60 degrees. So 60 degrees is probably about here. Okay, so this is 60 degrees. And then you wanna go out. So you draw this ray here. And then on there, you wanna mark out three units. So one, two, three, if that was the width of my units. Okay, and so then that is the point, <coughs> excuse me, um, three and 60 degrees. And when I meant that there was another way to graph it, the other way to graph it is to use that radius and go out three degrees. And so ideally you would be here. And then what you do is you take that point and you rotate it 60 degrees. And so now it's here. Okay, and then this is being 60 degrees, this angle here. You still kind of have that ray that's going through there, right? But instead of just doing the angle first, drawing the ray, and then going three units out, you can go three units out and then rotate that point around three units. Now, or around 60 degrees. It is easier to do this, okay? Um, but I notice that sometimes I find myself doing this instead. So you just have to be careful. And the reason I do, the reason they want you to do this is because notice that if I use this width for my marks, um, it's not exactly right on point, right? I have it a little bit too close because my eyes didn't visually rotate it correctly, okay? So that's why they prefer for you to plot the angle first and then do the marking of how far out you have to go for the radius, okay? Now, it says number two, angles can be measured in their, in either degrees or in radians, okay? So in addition to the value of R can be positive or negative. So sometimes you will have a negative radius, okay? And this, um, if the value R is negative, it says for us to describe how this will affect the drawing of the point. Now, to explain this, it's important for me to do it the way I do it sometimes and not necessarily the way they suggest for me to do it, okay? Because if I do it the opposite way, if I were to graph this point that has a negative radius, my way, okay? So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna, instead of going three units positive X, I'm gonna go three units in the negative direction. And so the point would be there, but that's not the final answer. That's not the actual point. That's just a marker for me to remember this is three units out, okay? Then I would take that and I would go 60 degrees. Now it's positive 60 degrees, which means I need to continue going clockwise around. So when I go 60 degrees, 60 degrees is going to be about here. So again, there's my ray and this angle that I've gone is 60 degrees, okay? And so then my point exists down there. Now, look at this point compared to when I had done it the other way. Okay, this, the coordinates of this point are three and 60 degrees. Okay, the coordinates to this point are negative three and 60 degrees. Okay, so they're asking us, um, how can you describe drawing it? There's another way to draw it than to go to the negative side and then 60 degrees clockwise, okay? The other way to draw it is to draw it using a positive radius, but then where you land, that point is gonna reflect over the origin or in other words, reflect over the origin, this being the origin. Um, and just FYI, the, they call it the pole in polar coordinates but it's the origin in rectangular coordinates. The same thing, I use those words interchangeably and more times than not, I'll use the word origin, okay? But the book, because we're in chapter 10, we'll say the word pole, but I'll reiterate each time I see the word pole and remember that that just means origin of the axes, right? Where the two axes um, intersect. So it says rotate it 180 degrees or pi, right? Because notice this is a one flat line, this whole ray. 
So to go from here all the way around to here, that is going to be 180 degrees, which is the same thing as pi, okay? So you can plot it with a positive and then just make sure you reflect it over the um, axes or that you rotate it an additional pi degrees, okay? So because of that, that's, that actually gets into um, multiple representations because what that means is that if I want to land on this point, this point also can equal three, positive three and 60 degrees plus 180 degrees. So it's three and what is that? Um, 60 plus 180 is, oh, I didn't type it in there correctly is 240 degrees. So these two will land in the same spot. So if I go out three units and then go around 240 degrees, I land in the same spot, okay? Not only that, I could go counterclockwise and then I would have positive three and then going counterclockwise um, it would be a negative 120 degrees. So there's multiple representations of um, this point. And that's what I was saying that it, it, it comes in handy. I know it gets confusing when you're learning it, but when you start getting into more complex things and calculus, it does come in handy to switch over to a system where you can use this or this or this, right? And see which one will let you solve a problem faster. So, there is a point to it, is what I'm trying to get at. Um, so for us, it says for us to first plot this point and then give some other, um, at least three other representations for it, okay? And I'll show you how to do that. One is gonna be by doing this. You're gonna change the sign of the um, thing here and then you're going to um, add 180 degrees. And then the next thing you'll do is you'll um, you'll just kind of, you have to really apply logic, okay? You can also do the negative angle and see where that's gonna get you and things like that. So let's go ahead and graph this one and then let's talk out how to come up with three other representations, okay? So it says plot four and two pi over three. Now two pi over three is in radians. So we've got one pi over three, 2 pi over 3, 3 pi over 3, or this is 3 pi over 3, and then 4 pi over 3, 5 pi over 3, and then 6 pi over 3. So there's my pi over 3 units. So 2 pi over 3 is on this ray, okay? This ray represents the angle going out from the terminal side here, 2 pi over 3 units, okay? but I need to go four out. So one, two, three, four. So my point is right here. I'll extend the ray just so you can see my point a little bit better. Okay, so the point exists here, okay? So they're asking us to represent that location um, using three other ways. So we have a couple of options. Now, instead of going the positive direction, I could have gone the negative direction, okay? And so what angle is that going to be? Well, two pi over three minus two pi is actually negative four pi over three. So I could have gone four units out and then rotated this direction to get there and I would have landed on the same spot. So since I went out to the right, that would be a positive four, but then a negative four pi over three representation. So that's one representation, okay? Going counterclockwise instead of clockwise. Another representation is instead of going clockwise, just two pi over three, I can go a whole way around and then again, go to that angle. So that would be the same as doing two pi over three plus two pi. 
And that is, oh, let me just go back up here and type in a plus sign. And I get eight pi over three. So another representation would be to go out four units and then rotate eight pi units. Eight pi over three units, sorry. Now the last representation, I wanna use a negative R, okay? So I've gone all the way around once and then the two pi, I've gone counterclockwise, right? Those are the two ways you can do with the angles. The other one is to see what happens if you do a negative radius, okay? So if I do a negative radius, then that means I would go out one, two, three, four this way, okay? So I have negative four. But then how am I gonna get here? Now there really is two ways. I can go counterclockwise this angle, or I could go clockwise all the way around that way. So there really is four representations, four other representations that I could use, okay? I'll do all four just so that you can see, but you really only need to choose three when it comes to the program, okay? So, and there's a bunch. There's, these are not the only ones, okay? There's plenty, plenty more representations, but these are just the ones that, um, that come to people naturally, okay? So if I want to go this angle, then that would mean pi minus two pi over three, right? Because this is pi and then I'm gonna go backwards and this is two pi over three. So let's see, pi minus two pi over three is actually pi over three, but I'm going counterclockwise. So that would be negative pi over three. Another representation would be to still use the negative four. So I'm still over here but then I wanna go all the way around there. So basically I'm going to take um, this angle here. So I'm starting here. So I'm gonna go all the way around, which is pi, and then go around an additional two pi over three. So that's pi plus two pi over three. And let's go back up here and change it to a plus. And we get five pi over three. So I have four representations of that same point here. However, they only asked you for three. I just wanted you to see that you could get all four doing it this way, okay? So notice that for the first two, I didn't mess around with the radius. All I did was add two pi or add two pi and take away two pi to get another representation, okay? For the negatives, I added 